My goodness me. Do we have some important things to talk about? Maybe a few little, uh, little bonus memes at the end there as well. A little, uh, little bonus meme, guys. All right, here we go. It is the studio update, world restructuring, and the future of World vs. World. Let's check it out. Market calendars, the first week-long beta event for the World vs. World restructuring feature, takes place on September 24th to October 1st. We're here to outline the development and beta testing plans for world restructuring and talk about the future of World vs. World game mode. We'll start by describing the overall vision for the feature, then describe the functionality that will be introduced in the first two rollout phases. Let's take a look in. So what is world restructuring? So you guys might have heard of this feature known as alliances or broadly termed as alliances, but world restructuring is exactly what it says on the tin. It's trying to address player population imbalances and create some fun matches. And essentially it deprecates the concept of shards or servers or worlds as you've probably seen them. And it actually turns it into a guild based system. So a matchmaking system in the game mode where players, guilds and alliances, player managed groups of guilds. So you can like clump together as a bunch of guilds stick together. So if you've got three guilds that want to play together all the time, you can do that. Are programmatically redistributed to new teams uh, on a set schedule. This gives us more flexibility and granularity when creating new teams and helps address natural fluctuations of populations over time. In other words, they're trying to keep everything rejiggling all the time and making good matches with really active teams on both sides, right? Exactly what you want to see. Kind of an issue with World vs. World right now is this, right? Like, you know, you have a lot of bandwagoning stuff going on there as well. And just, you know, servers in general kind of lost their integrity with links existing. So they're trying to kind of take it away from servers and put it onto um, put it onto uh, guilds instead. Makes a lot of sense then. Also give players more agency in choosing who they want to play with on an ongoing basis and allows long-standing communities to continue playing together. So this is a really big deal. Like the whole point of an alliance is so you can keep playing together if you're a long-standing community, but it also gives you a lot more choice in who you play with. And this is actually a really big deal because there's a lot of different, obviously World Bus was a pretty wide open game mode, right? Big wide open game mode. Uh, Roy, thanks for the sub down. We appreciate it. Yes, indeed, guys. Okay. Tea time is incoming. Let's go. Prime content. But anyway, for a quick little sellout there, mid a discussion here. There's a lot of different play styles, right? Romers, uh, Zergers, uh, you know, point captures, right? PBT players, right? And when these players kind of clash, you tend to have a little bit of friction. And addressing that friction is a very, very smart thing to do to try and make people like hate each other less is a really, really good idea, in my opinion. That is what we really like to see. Okay, with this stuff. And just basically allowing the game to be a bit more fun for everyone is good. Matchmaking, when teams are destroyed and recreated, occurs at the beginning of each season. The term season in the context of Wolves describes a period of time between each matchmaking event. The length of the season is not yet finalized, but could be up to eight weeks long. Uh, essentially, basically the way uh, relinks are now, right? Before a season begins, players can select which of their current guilds, and by extension the alliance, they'd like to play with for that season. Once matchmaking occurs, any changes to a player selected guild will not take effect until next season. So you, yeah, this is one thing that people were talking about. Like, you can't, like, transfer all over the place. Uh, like, you know, you can't just, like, start, you know, you can't just go, oh, you know what? We're losing. I'm over there. So you do have to commit, and I like that as well. This is definitely, like, a big step to prevent people from kind of ditching, right? If, if things start to go a little bit pear-shaped, right? So you have to kind of commit to it and make the best of it there as well. So you can't just jiggle around too much. Of course, I think you'll still be able to transfer server, so go between EU and NA, I think. But the super interesting thing, guys, is that transfers are free with this. This was actually essentially confirmed. I think Grout said this on Discord at some point, right? Saying that basically you know like the transfer money it ain't worth you know how much better the game can be like this feels good man very people happy there while the composition of each team is static during a season you'll be matched up against different opponents each week using the existing one up one down matchup system okay so there you go it's basically it it makes these teams and then reforms them every single time but we still have this similar system where you, you win your matchup you go up lose your matchup you go down right or you know you're middling you stay the same right makes sense Active World vs. World players that have not selected a World vs. World guild before the start of a season will be automatically matchmade onto a team. New players or players that were inactive for a extended period before the start of the season will not be automatically placed, but will have the option to choose which team they'd like to join. Teams will become locked or full once they've reached population cap, like the current system. So, the, you know, again, broadly, the systems are going to function fairly similarly, right? It's just that instead of, like, 
picking a server, you have a little bit more granularity, a bit more control over where you end up going, essentially. Uh, and, yeah, I think this is, like, a big thing here as well. Um, so, this one is pretty interesting, actually. A bit of clarification here. So, I think the way I assumed it was that if you didn't pick, you just basically get, like, oh, you're in there. Like, you're needed in this server? Get in there. You need that in that uh, world? Get over there and enjoy it. However, interesting, you actually, you, if you play World vs. World, it looks like if you don't pick, it, when you first play the game, it will say, oh, hey, join an alliance, right? Which one would you like to join? Or, like, rather, which world would you like to join? So you get to kind of pick there uh, if you haven't played for a while or if you're a new player. I kind of like that. That's a, that's a good solution. That's a good implementation. Okay? And, of course, just like before, you can't, like, overstack. You can't, like, giga stack uh, a team, right? So, you know, if there are loads of pugs joining, they can't all join the same uh, same team, right? They can't join the same world uh, to just ridiculously overstack it. That makes sense. I mean, seems like a very fleshed out system, right? Seems like ever they've kind of thought of everything here in this regard. Matchmaking will initially use factors such as world versus world participation and playtime to place players, guilds, and alliances on teams. We're open to adding additional variables to matchmaking. Time zone. Whoa! Once you've ironed out the initial kinks of the system, that is a big one. Okay, that is huge. They're going about doing that. Actually, I love to see it, guys, because that means that you can kind of maybe get around or try and make it like active at a certain time, right? So you don't have you know loads of desynchronized players there. I like that. That's a very intelligent thing there as well. And you could also do other. You could also look at some other variables too, right? You could have skill, for example, right? So you could have, like, highly skilled teams matched up against each other more often, right? Or, or, again, game interest, right? You could have PPT guilds kind of match with other ones there as well. So, you again, you don't have this clash in play style, right? And you have, like, um, teams that are more fight-oriented there as well. Then there's a lot of good stuff they could do here, again, to reduce that player friction. The functionality detail above, we rolled out in multiple phases, each with its own set of beta tests, open to adding? Well, that means that, you know, they'll consider it if it's going to be worth it, right? I think that, that's a good answer. Phase one of world restructuring includes a substantial back-end overhaul of how world versus world works, but most of this is invisible to the player. On the player-facing side of things, it will feature matchmaking support for ungilded players and guilds. Alliance functionality will come in phase two. Okay. All right. Okay. So, phase one, we actually don't have this uh, joining together of our guilds it's going to be rolled out in the second phase there so for now you just basically just say okay just get in there and obviously realistically i think this is probably for the best it kind of gives the person a little bit less control at least for the start to see how the matchmaking actually works how balance makes the matchups uh and you know obviously you're not really going to have time to really kind of get to get really stuck in this because you've only got a week anyway that makes sense and yeah they're just saying it's to make sure that it actually works and it will make sure that the population is sane the queue times aren't horrible and that you know the matchups aren't ridiculously skewed makes a lot of sense on September 21st, uh, a new tab for the world restructuring feature will become available in the in-game world versus world menu. On this tab, you'll be able to choose which of your guilds you'll want to play with during the world restructuring beta event. Please choose your world versus world guild before, okay, midnight Pacific time on September 23rd, or you'll be match made onto a team as an individual player. So yeah, that's kind of cool actually. So if you do forget, it doesn't, you're not like locked out of world versus world, you'll just be, you'll be in there, right? You'll be in there, you'll be an individual player, you've got to pick your team. So make sure you select your guild. It seems like there's a lot of UI stuff here that's actually pretty cool, like the way you can actually select this stuff. I like it. I like it. That all makes sense. This is just describing the functionality, really. Uh, the beta event starts at reset on September 24th. A World of Sword bonus weekend. Yeah, bonus weekend. At the conclusion of the beta event, World of Sword goes back to normal. Yep, exactly how it is, right? This is what I'm talking about. This is why it's not really a big deal that it kind of resets. Everything is going to reset, right? Like, it's going to go, block. They're obviously not going to let you, like, get your alliances going now. But start planning for them, guys. Start planning for them now. Oh, quick clarification, guys. PPT is points per tick. It's basically capturing objectives and fighting is fighting, right? All right. Uh, so you get valuable data. Tuning the matchmaking system. I like it. Okay, World Destruction Phase 2. The next plan addition to World Vs. will be the Alliances. Again, this joining together of guilds. This will allow multiple guilds to group together for the purposes of matchmaking. Each team can include multiple alliances. Our current plan is to limit alliances to a total of 500 players. The same maximum size of a single guild. You know, this is pretty interesting, and I'm really curious as to how this actually works. Um, So, what does this actually mean? Does this mean uh, that if you have a guild of 500 players... You can't have anyone else joined. You know, it's like, well, of course that's what it means, Teapot. What I mean is, though, is what if only 300 of those players actually want to play World versus World? So let's suppose that you have a guild, 
500 people, but only 300 of them mark their their alliance, right? As in their, their world versus world uh, selected guild as that guild. Do you then have 200 people spare that you can kind of join together? Or do you actually essentially need to kind of force your guild to all play world versus world? I don't know, we'll see. The same, uh, trying to make a strong balance between alliances and player communities able to stick together while preventing the creation of juggernaut alliances. Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like they might increase that a little bit over time. 200 spares. Yeah, I hope that would be the way it works. If it didn't, um, if it didn't work that way, that would be really gimmicky because if you have like a pretty big guild, not everyone may be interested in playing World Buzzword. I don't know. We'll have to see, right? Uh, then reflexible and we'll be fine. I would probably expect them to make that go up a little bit. Although, having... Having said that, if you actually think about how many people play World vs. World, it's you don't want to have these teams that big, otherwise queues are going to get out of hand. Because think about this, guys. Like, bear in mind, alliances are not the biggest thing. Alliances are actually within teams, right? Which is basically replacing servers. So you don't want to have that many people, because if everyone tries to play, then the queues are going to be horrific. Think about this. Like, if you've got an alliance of 500 players, you can actually queue every map with that, uh, because you can have, what, 80 players, a little bit less than that, like 74 players on every map right now. Um, you would actually queue every single map. If you had your entire guild online, you'd queue all of them with one alliance, right? So just bear that in mind, guys, um, when when you're considering, like, oh, 500 is not that many. Oh, that's that's not enough, right? Just think about how how pretty annoying it would be if you had like really really active players even 500 is kind of a lot but obviously they've done this because they it, it, it would be a bit weird if it was less than the guild cap the guild cap that would be weird so that's why they've done that but just think about this i won't have chosen your server right, sir. okay there you go so you do get another thanks dart bringer there dude the ui man coming in there so again we've actually got that confirmed now so it looks like if you have 300 players then you essentially have a 200 spare for your alliance that's good. That's a really big feature there, I think. That's very important that it is that way. Otherwise, it makes handling like a kind of a PVX guild, a bit of a player versus everything guild. It makes it very, very awkward. That's good. I love to see it. Very nice. The uh, uh, the timeline for delivering alliance functionality largely depends on how well phase one goes. If we identify a large number of bugs or courses issues, we'll need to focus on solving those first. Yeah, that's fair enough. Beta development. We're approaching the development of world restructuring differently than what you've seen from us in the past. Our intention is to release the smallest functional versions of the feature onto the live servers. Beta test it for a limited time and use your feedback to improve future versions. This, I... Okay, listen. Okay, guys. I'm just going to give Anet a little bit of a... A little bit of a little bit of help here, maybe, Okay. Just cross out world restructuring and just do, like, game features. This is amazing. This is so good. Like, um, kind of releasing it out there, getting feedback, getting data, seeing how it works, getting the bugs sorted out, getting that stuff. Yes, yes, yes. I know it's probably going to be a little bit scuffed. I can't wait to see all of the beautiful, uh, beautiful interface, right? Like, the programmer artwork. I love to see it, guys, okay? We've all been there. We all know what that looks like, okay? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be beautiful, right? But... This is such a good way of doing it. Thank you for reading that. Like, I would love to see them actually roll this out in other areas of the game to help test things and to help actually, you know, get the player base's feedback on it and get data. That's what I'd love to see there. Awesome. We'll rinse and repeat until we've landed on a satisfactory implementation, then pause the feature, remove the bed tag, then fully erase it. Boom! That's what I'm talking about. It's like PTR. It's actually, it's the live game. Even better. The reasoning behind this approach is straightforward. World vs. World is a complicated game mode that's played in numerous ways. Oh, that's what I was talking about. Some players enjoy fights, some enjoy taking objectives, and some enjoy running away from fights. He he, right? Okay, like <laughs> he he, and then we also have the the hyphen there as well. I like it. Okay, like the uh, you know wait it, wait is he he? Did I would not type he like? But you know what? I like it. Right. Experiences can vary wildly between shards. We're looking at you, Maguma. Ah, the M Maguma call-out, dude. Uh, find the cloud. Finding the best solution for population balance that considers these differing places is a challenging proposition and not something that we can do without your input. We need feedback from our players to help narrow in on the right design. We'll be looking at both hard data and the, conversa uh, the conversation in the community to determine the feature's future. This approach comes with some trade-offs. Uh, for one, the initial limitation of World vs. World will have limited features. Yep, yeah, okay, so basically, this is they're talking about those phases, right? Like, first, no alliances, then we have alliances. You might immediately identify some features that would be nice to have. That's great. See? Yeah, that's the big trade-off. Right? Tell us what you're thinking and why you want it. This is exactly the reason why we're doing this. They know. They get it. We want to build the things that our players want, not waste things, waste time on things they don't. Dude, it's this music. It's beautiful. Can you guys hear it? It, it, it Oh, man. Oh, dude, like... <laughs> 
programmer art. Second trade off is that the front end of the system will be a little rough, using programmer art as we call it. We're going to hold on final art and user experience polish until we've locked down the design of the feature. This makes sense because, like, what's the point in, like, polishing this interface, right? If you're going to change it, like, 15 different times, right, down the line, right? Makes sense. In other words, we're going to focus on making sure the system solves the problem before we make it look nice. This is a good approach, okay? You know, Style over substance, not a good way to look at it, okay? Substance over style, nice. We'll be monitoring and participating in dedicated feedback threads on the Gil Fish. Ah, oh, ah, oh, yes, the forums, the best place to have discourse. Yeah, not sure about that one. Um, I think my green screen's about to fall me. That's, that's disturbing. Okay, we'll also keep you up to date with our latest observations and decisions regarding world destruction via regular updates on the Guild Wars 2 blog. That's nice, right? Uh, that is good. And how you the best place have your voice heard? Well, I hope they're not just looking at that, because it, uh, okay. <laughs> the forums are quite something, right? Alright. I like the iteration, though. Uh, looking at full week, eight weeks, smaller updates uh, during the seasons. Well, they, they talk about this here, right? So, if you look up here, phase one. Okay, um, the beta event ends on October 1. They didn't really give a clear thing when they're going to do phase 2, but this is basically like a week of a week of alliances and seeing how the system actually works. Maybe they'll try it again a little bit later on there. They'll, you know, they'll they'll do a few more tests, right? But they haven't necessarily said, if it goes really well, then they'll probably go into phase 2. Otherwise, they'll probably do a, a few more phase ones. They basically say this here, right? So there you go. There you go. Right, looking to the future. World versus world is an experience unlike any other. That's definitely one way of putting it. An epic combination of battles on a massive scale, competition, community, of course, rivalry. It scratches an itch that many of us have had since the early days of Realm vs. Realm gameplay and PC gaming. Dude, new world's coming for it, but dude, ArenaNet, look, they're making a comeback. They're scaling. They're scaling into the late game, guys, okay? Nine years in. <laughs> dude, nine years in, ArenaNet have realized that World vs. World is actually quite a special game mode that people actually like. I mean, hey, you know, it's, it's better late than never. You know, that's what they say, guys, right? It, it's good. World vs. World as it is today is good, but it could be great. As we stated in the July 2nd, July uh, studio update, our leadership team views World vs. World as a cornerstone game mode trademarked of Guild Wars 2, and we intend to support it as such. Oh, the, these are big words. These are big words. And we say as well, acknowledging that in the past, World vs. World players haven't consistently received support or the attention they deserve. Dude, honestly, I think that's a really good thing to say. Like, kind of owning that, admitting that. Big respect there to a reading that, actually. That's, um, that's a little bit of humble pie there. And I think that's going to do a lot to at least th the olive branch is being extended, right? Let's talk about future plans and priorities as we know them today. Largely informed by your feedback on our own assessment of the mode. These priorities are subject to change as we continue to listen, observe, and learn. If they do change, we'll let you know. Nice. Communication. That's good. Player population balance is a critical component of any competitive game mode, and imbalances can be have a marked negative impact on gameplay to the extent that the experience no longer reflects the design intent. Yeah, I mean, this is this is definitely true. Uh, I, I think that if you have if you have different playstyles clashing, particularly on your own server, or if you just have, like, one server that's way stronger than the other, it becomes a little bit like, oh, okay. Right, if there's one zone just farming the other, it becomes a little bit unfun. And certainly in, with regards to outnumbering, right? Like, numbers are obviously very important in world versus world, like, for fighting or for anything, really. Uh, and there is only so much you can do, right? If the enemy team has two times as many players as you, they're probably going to win one way or another. World restructuring is going to remain our top priority until we feel that it's been satisfactorily addressed. Mm, okay, they're going to go for it. I want it. Look, they've already talked a lot about iteration. Let's do this. Uh, this will likely remain our focus through the release of Guild Wars 2 Ender Dragons. Boom. There you go. Look, it's not a one-off, guys. It is going to keep on going. It's going to keep on going. Let's do this. After world restructuring, we'll be... So after that, um, interesting. I wa- ooh, ooh, we're looking to make Wolves World more rewarding, the focus on active play. Oh, holy shit, what a good blog post. Oh, one of the biggest issues in World vs. World is that doing anything doesn't do anything. Ah, yes. Performance means nothing. Passive stuff means everything. We're looking at improving individual rewards for participation performance. This will be a mix of adding new rewards and improving older systems. As an example, we'd like to address our support players are under-rewarded. Yeah, because it, it's a bit weird with the way you tag stuff, right? Like, if you... Applying boons will kind of help tag, but obviously doing damage tags way better, right? And that is definitely a big feels bad, man. We'd like to address our... Oh, 
Skirmish tracks also take longer to rest, especially for new players. Oh, they know. They're just listing off all the things that are wrong with the game. Second, we want to give players and guilds a reason to care about winning their current match. Oh, my God. It's it's hitting all of them. It's just, it's just, oh, God, oh, oh, oh. Every point being hit here, right? Like, I, this is actually one of the most complete responses to World vs. what I've ever seen. Yes, no one cares about winning. This leads to people to play, like, a really degenerate way, right, too. Like, people stop playing the game in a sense of way, just like, they just smash into each other over and over again for no reason, because winning doesn't mean anything, right? Very good. Yeah, rewards are way too passive. Uh, doing well doesn't make you get more rewarded, right? Like, it's way too slow, particularly if you're a new player because of the world versus the rank, right? Oh, if they actually fix this stuff, this is going to be a god-tier game mode, right? This is going to be an actual god-tier game mode. I love to see it, guys. I love to see it. They know? I mean, yeah, like, hey, like, it took nine years, and we got there in the end. Uh oh, uh oh, guys. We want to give players and girl, um and reward them for exceptional performance during a season. Longer term, we'd also like to introduce systems that would allow girls to flex and compare their world versus world prowess. Oh, okay, right now you guys actually might think this would make it more toxic, but I actually think the lack of this is actually why there is toxicity in the game, and let me explain why. In my opinion toxicity and ego is a huge issue in world versus world because it's actually very difficult to determine who is the best right um uh, a lot of the time there's no actual objective like yardstick on who's actually the best outside of gvg which is a community run thing right um but i think a lot of toxicity actually comes from this inability to express how good you are at the game this inability to express how good your community is because world versus world doesn't really have this it's so nebulous it's so ego driven right it's just ego it's just talk it's all talk right okay and it's not there's nothing kind of like big and a bit more meta that actually defines how well you're doing so I know this sounds like it's going to make people like be super toxic. I think it's actually the opposite. I think this is one of the best things you can do to reduce toxicity is have a, yeah, we won, you lost, right? We're the best. That, in my opinion, is very good at removing toxicity, but there it is. Once both population balance and rewards are addressed, our theory is that world versus world gameplay may see a significant shift. This is definitely true, right? And yeah, dude, this, dude, what I love about this is that who, I mean, whoever wrote this, guys, I mean, we know it was Grouch, okay? I think it was Grouch anyway, right? Okay, he's on it, okay? He's on it. He knows what the hell's going on. He's got the juice, he's got the source, right? He understands the game mode. He understands the situation here, right? And this is what's really impressing me with this post. What's really impressing me is, is the level of connection, right, that we're seeing from the company and the players right now. I would go as far to say that basically everything, right, um, that uh, players are concerned about in World vs. World has been brought up here and has been actually addressed rather well. I like it. I love to see it. Players tend to naturally optimize their gameplay towards the goal, and with that comes new strategy and meta. Yeah, and this is maybe some of the scary things about alliance uh, alliances. I, I think that in the same way that adding like a yardstick for who's the best, um, is good it's also going to make people really go for that and that can potentially lead to very unfun gameplay for example like camping siege is going to be very very good because you don't want to throw um defending is going to be really really big uh ganking is going to be meta just straight up guys um think about it right like if the enemy team is bringing in reinforcements from their respawns and players coming onto the map you want 10 thieves killing all of them. So the Zerg has to leave your structure so you can repair it and rebuild the siege. Uh, or they just don't get those reinforcement players, right? Like, so ganking is just strictly going to be a thing that you are going to have to do if you want to win. Um, with this comes really good things, right? Like, you know, uh, faking attacking a structure, uh, fainting, um, you know, kiting, uh, kiting out Zergs, distracting Zergs, right? Trolling, right? Loads of kind of really sneaky tactics. That's amazing. Like attacking in one map, but actually realistically your main Zerg is attacking on a different map going for their tier three, trying to reset it. There's loads of really interesting things that I think will actually naturally start being done because this the game's going to be way less Zerg focused, much more skirmish, like no ultra Zerg. It's going to be smaller groups attacking multiple objectives at the same time. Roaming is way more relevant as well, right? Uh, well, you know, ganking, right? Roaming, ganking, whatever is going to be way more relevant. This makes World vs. what a much more... 
uh, less binary, much more interesting game mode from a strategy and gameplay perspective, in my opinion. But yeah, it definitely actively encourages you. It actively encourages you to um, to grief because you want your opponents to not log in and you want to like make them not play the game. So obviously they're going to be looking at that and they're going to try to make that not not too uh, not too extreme there obviously. And yeah, exactly. You're right. Um this is exactly the way um uh, that the game is now. It's just that it, there's no point. And this is what they're talking about. This is what Grouch here is talking about. He's saying that, oh yeah, um, it isn't... The meta is going to change, right? So they need to make sure that the next meta is going to be fun, right? They need to make sure that Siege gameplay is fun to play. Because why don't people do this now? People don't do this now because a lot of the stuff here is kind of annoying, right? Uh, they're watching out for toxic behavior they need to try and get rid of. Um, and they're also looking out for things that aren't fun. Like, And if stuff like attacking and Siege is not fun, then yeah, then they're going to have a look at that. And you can see them talk about this here, right? We intend to uh, have a very hard look at core uh, World of Systems, upgrade scoring Siege, and balance them to ensure that the World of experience is still reflecting our vision. No system is safe from iteration. Oh, man, that is a, a beautiful sentence right there. A beautiful sentence. But do you see what I mean there, right? Like, they're going to be looking at the game to make sure uh, that the game remains fun, even when winning matters. Because World Boss what is in a very weird spot where winning is kind of irrelevant, um, and therefore people don't optimize that, because optimizing towards that typically isn't the most way to have, it isn't the best way to have fun, right? So that's what they're getting in there. Uh, it's good that they know that. Feels good. Okay. I love to see it, guys. I like it. Okay. Uh, once both population balance and rewards have been addressed, our theory is that World vs. World gameplay may see a significant shift. Oh, whoops. I already read that. Everything described above is aimed at addressing the foundational issues affecting the World vs. World experience. Our priorities beyond this point are highly flexible and will undoubtedly be influenced by the community and the needs of the game mode. Expect more communications just like this one down the road. I mean, look. Yeah, this is just... It's, it's, it's W off W, guys. It's just, he keeps on winning. Right? He's winning all the time. Uh, before we wrap up this section, we did want to mention that we understand how important profession balance is for Wolf's World gameplay. To address this, after the expansion releases, we'll be dedicating design resources to overseeing profession begats for the live game in a full-time capacity, supporting PvE, PvP, and Wolf vs. World. This will allow us to deliver balance updates on a much more consistent cadence. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I've heard that one five, six times before, but dude... They better do it. I, I mean, look, you guys have better do that. You know, like, you know, it, let's go, right? That will be amazing. That will be one of the best ways um, to actually... To actually make the game consistently better, right? Changing up the meta in, in all these three gamers is huge. A new meta is content. Balance is is content, guys. You've got to bear that in mind. New builds, new strategies, uh, new things to fight against, right? Uh, all this stuff is content. I want to see CMC Unchained, right? Unchain this man. Right now, he's locked up, working on elite specs, probably getting, you know, basically digging in, in, in you know, digging a well in the arena HQ to make sure he can stay hydrated. This is big, guys. This is absolutely huge. Let's go, Anet. Let's get this going. If they actually do that, it's amazing, but I mean, I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I, <laughs> This is one of the things that I, I have to maybe say that I'll believe it when I see it, right? Wrapping up. All right, here we go then. That's it for the day. If you have questions or feedback regarding world restructuring or overall priorities for world versus world, please drop us a note on the official forums. ArenaNet staff Raymond Lukes, lead gameplay engineer, and Josh Grouch Davis, head of live operations, will join. Oh, what's this, guys? Oh, my goodness. We'll join ArenaNet partners, Mighty Bot, and Roy. On September 16th at noon Pacific time, UTC minus seven on Twitch for a live discussion regarding world restructuring and the future of world versus world. So we'll look to address as many of your questions as we can then. Wow. How about that, guys? Right. How about that? Exciting stuff, guys. Yeah. I like how Roy doesn't even get his uh, a link here, by the way. Right, like that. <laughs> but there you go, I guess. Poor Roy, no link. I get a link. I'm important enough. Uh, Roy is not. There it is. Um, but anyway, exciting stuff, guys. I love to see it. And of course, 
get ready for the show, okay? The show will be there next week, guys. But the day before the Elite Spec stuff on the Friday, that's going to be a Thursday, guys. So stay tuned for that. We'll be talking about world restructuring, getting some questions answered, of course, responding to maybe some of your questions in chat there as well. Thank you for reading. We're incredibly excited to bring world restructuring to life. And we're looking forward to bringing world versus world into the experience we all know it can be. The Guild Wars 2 team, that is one hell of a post. Now, I do know that this is just talk, guys, but, and I know it is a bit of a meme to say this time for realsies, but we are under new leadership. If it's going to be this time for realsies, then this is going to be this time for realsies, right? If they actually do this, this is massive. World versus World is special. It does define Guild Wars 2 from other titles in a way that, honestly, the other game modes don't. Other games, guys, have PvP. Other games have raids, right? They have PvE, right? But games don't have World versus World. And I think this could actually be huge. This could be a massive deal, right? I know that's copium, guys. I know I'm hitting that copium hard, right? But if they can pull this off, if they can actually deliver on this, then honestly, I'm scared for New World. I'm scared for these other games because they're going to be competing against a very fleshed out experience and a very good and enjoyable one that will be very difficult to go up against, actually. I like it. I love, yeah, and I love that they're owning mistakes, right? I think big respect to that, right? Instead of just ignoring it, they're like, yeah, okay, we fucked it up, right? We, you know, we admit that, right? Uh, hey, nine years down the line, we got there in the end. Love to see it. Very, very good indeed. But yeah, exciting time, guys. Exciting. Get Click my link. Right, here we go. Nice. I don't exist either. Well, that's okay, though. I, that's true. I mean, I'm, I'm a nobody. It's all good. But there you go. Uh, honestly, I want to say a big shout out there to uh, to ArenaNet for kind of allowing me to do this, by the way, as in the show. It's a big honor to be kind of taking part in this. And of course, I'll see all of you guys there on Thursday, noon Pacific time. I believe that's 8 p.m. UK time, guys, and I believe 9 p.m. European time. I will be going live uh, beforehand. Uh, so basically, I'll do like a normal stream, bit of a warm up. Then I'll take a quick break, probably like a half an hour break. And then we'll be back for the main stream there as well, guys. There it is. Good content, good memes, good everything, guys. I love to see it. Very impressed by that. Very impressed. Alliances on their own aren't going to fix world versus world. But ArenaNet clearly understand the current issues that the world versus world um, community has an has problems with, right? And what is currently facing world versus world. This is very, very good. They know the issues. All they've got to do now is fix it. That's it. Easy, right? Impressive stuff. Love to see it, guys.